When working on a project, I would say you generally want to move quickly. And while you could build everything from scratch yourself, it's probably usually faster to just leverage other tools that people have created. With that in mind, today I want to take you through the Convex Helpers Library. It's an awesome repository packed full of useful helpers that make working with Convex faster and smoother. So today we're going to keep it pretty high level so we can get through these in a reasonable amount of time, but I'm going to come back to some of these and do a more in-depth videos in the future. So without any further ado, grab yourself a lovely cup of tea and let's get started. Okay, so first up is one of the more popular helpers out there, and I've seen it out in the wild quite a bit. It is the custom functions. And so custom functions are great if you want to build your own version of a query mutation or action. It effectively lets you wrap those and return some custom context or args. I personally have used them to great effect when I want to create custom user queries. That is queries that automatically return the currently logged in user as part of the context. I would say, however, just use this with caution as it can sometimes be clearer to simply write a helper function that you call inside of your comics function instead of this, this custom wrapper form. Query caching is one of my personal favorites. So if you just drop in the convex client provider here at your React top level, you can then import the special version of use query. Then when you navigate between the pages, you're going to get a much more responsive result. So here is the experience we would have before we used the query caching. I go from this page to this page and back again. I notice that all the items have to reload. That's because the query has gone out of scope. So it's ditched the query. And then when you come back again, it has to re redo the query once again. But if I now use the query cache version of use query, my items will now instantaneously load when I navigate back again. So it's a super cool trick and it works by simply hanging on to the query for a little bit of time between navigations. And you can control how long it does this for in the settings that you provide to the provider. Triggers are great and super powerful as they let you register handlers that will get called before a document is created or updated or deleted. So for example, if you want to attach a computed full name field to every user, then you can do it like this. Then we are past this change object here, which we can then use to compute the full name and then set that if it hasn't changed. You could also implement cascading deletes uh, using triggers. So here, for example, we check if it's a delete operation. And if it is, we then delete all messages that belong to that user. There's so much more you can do with triggers that I'm definitely gonna have to do another video on it. So if you'd like to see that happen, please do leave me a comment down below. So this one is so useful, I think it probably should be included in Convex out of the box. The validator utilities add a bunch of little tools that make working with the Convex validators just a little bit nicer. For example, there are utilities that help when creating a union of literals or deprecated or partials. Then there is my personal favorite, the doc and the ID helper. So if you're doing something like this in Convex where you split out the schema for a table just so you can then later access it in a function, um, then you no longer need to do this. Instead, just define a typed validator here from the Convex helpers validator utilities, and then you can grab the doc for any table. Nice. Oh, and you can also grab the typed ID for any table in the same way. Super nice. So with this one, instead of a query returning either the value or undefined if it's loading, then with the use query with status hook, you can return more information about its state, whether it's loading, pending, or errored. I personally haven't used this one much as I prefer the simpler use query API, but I know others have complained about this in the past, so hopefully this solves their concerns. Query streams are another one of those helpers that I think I'm going to have to do an entire video on because there's just so much here. But um, the basic idea is that thanks to the fact that queries are actually running inside of the database on Convex, that you can actually implement SQL features like union all or where or join in a very elegant and nice way thanks to the async iterable. To explain what I mean, imagine you have a chat app like Discord where you have lots of users sending messages all the time. Now you want to show a UI of some sort that only shows messages from a certain subset of those users. And you want to paginate it so you only show 100 messages, for example. 
the way that you would typically have to do that normally with convex uh, it might look something like this so here we take in an array of authors that we want to show and some pagination options uh, and then we're going to pull in all the messages from the author and manually combine those together to, and then handle the pagination stuff ourselves. But with streams, we can do this in a much more elegantly way like this. Here we take the authors and convert them each to a stream. Then we can merge those streams together and return the paginated result. And the neat thing about streams is that it, because it uses async iterator, it lazily only pulls as much information as it needs to satisfy that page. Very cool. As I say, I'm barely scratching the surface on this one. So if you'd like to see a longer video on this, please drop me a message down below. Convex functions are really nice as they automatically validate your input for you if you include it in this args field here. But what if you're already using Zod in your project for validation? Are you gonna have to rewrite all of your validators using the convex validator instead? Fortunately, the answer is no, thanks to this helper, as it means you can do something like this. So at the top, we create a Z query, which wraps the normal convex query, returning a custom function, if you remember those from before. Um, then we use it down here, where we define a query function that can take a Zod validator as an arg. Very nice. Cause is one of those things that I always find really annoying. I mean, I get it, it's designed to stop like sites from accessing your backend when they're not permitted to do so, but it still ends up being really a pain to implement. Well, fortunately in Convex Helpers, there is a helper that lets us simplify this. So here's an example of what it might look like using the helper. So we can see here we've got a post root here and a handler and we're saying allowed origins is this. And then cause is gonna take care of all of the option pre-flighting and the headers and everything else that's needed. So I talked about this one previously in my video about faking high frequency updates on Convex. But the idea is that with the use single flight hook, you can ensure that there's only ever going to be one call to Convex at one time. So for example, we have a React component here that's tracking the mouse movement positions and then sending them to the server using the save pointer position mutation here. But obviously it's going to, every time we move the cursor, it's going to be sending a new message to the server. But if we drop in the single flight, flight hook here, then it's going to limit it so that there's only ever one call to the server at any one time. It's going to wait for the other one to come back before it sends the next one up. And if we just pop open the console here and I move my mouse around, you can see that it waits for the turn before sending it again. Last but not least, we have stable queries. So by default, Convex's use query returns either the value or undefined if it's loading, as you can see here where this get full name query here is taking a first name and last name and then concatenating them together and returning a string. The, the type of this return value is either the string or undefined. Now, watch what happens when I actually type something here. You'll see there's a short loading state while the query goes up to convex and back again. So the query is kind of in this loading state, loading an undefined state while it's in flight. But if we drop in the use stable query hook in here, instead of the default use query, and we try it again, we'll see that there's no loading state. So what's happening here is that the use stable query is going to continue to show the last value while the request is in flight and then swap it out as soon as the new value returns. Good stuff. All right, so I hope you found this overview of the Convex Helpers library useful. I have left links down below in the description if you want to check out and use it in your next project. And as I mentioned in the video, some of these helpers really do deserve their own videos. So please drop me a comment down below or come and find me on Discord if you'd like to see me go into more depth about some of them. And if you like this video, maybe you'd like to check out this video where I explain vector search and embeddings on Convex. This video didn't get a lot of views. I'm not sure why. Maybe you don't like seeing me dress up as a schoolgirl. Anyway, until next time, thanks for watching. Cheerio.